one. So, I'm 28, and I've been in the industry for 12 years. Done it all. Back of house to start, and every position in front of house for the last 10. I've been at the same casual, fine dining restaurant as a mixologist for the last five years. It's been amazing. But I've had some extreme life changes in the past year and a half. I had a baby. That made me feel like I need to make some major lifestyle changes that are more accommodating to being a parent. I have no education beyond high school. I graduated really early and took a year off that somehow stretched into 11. I've tried to leave the industry a couple of times in my early 20s before I found the restaurant I have called home for the last five years. I always told myself I would eventually go back to school for something one day so I could get a career of some sort. But when I got pregnant, I kind of came to terms that it was never going to happen. I've had a lot of anxiety about what I'll do when I age out. I kind of figured I'd either be the 55-year-old bartender or working McJobs till I die to pay for my daughter's education. So hopefully she would do better than I did. When I came back from maternity leave, one of the restaurant's investors came in for a business lunch. And he asked how I've been adjusting to work and family life. I told him how much I've always loved my job, but I'm really struggling with having such a nocturnal job with no benefits or upward trajectory to work towards. It reminded me how the owners of my restaurant, himself being one of them, had multiple business ventures outside of the hospitality industry, and how I could potentially make a shift to one of them. I told him the idea was nice, but I lacked any real qualifications in any other industry. He told me I had been an excellent employee for half a decade, and I should value my contributions more. We both went on our way, and I didn't pay the conversation much mind. That was three months ago. This afternoon, he called me and offered me a position as a GM for one of his other businesses. It's life-changing money. Benefits, company perks, a retirement package, regular hours that actually make daycare a realistic option. The whole nine yards. A career. Everyone else in the company with this position has at minimum a bachelor's degree in business management. It's more than I ever could have dreamed of getting without a mountain of student debt and years of working my way through promotions. A career path I thought had passed me by at some point while I mixed cocktails and bust tables. I've loved and hated this job for so long that it feels surreal to think I'm going to be leaving it soon. I'm so excited for the opportunities it presents for my daughter and myself. And I'm so heartbroken to think that pretty soon I'll be mixing my last cocktail, bussing my last table, and gossiping about customers to chef for the last time. I'm so unbelievably thankful that doing this job has landed me this career opportunity. Cheers, everyone. This bartender will soon be clocking out for the last time. Two. This is the first time I've ever flat out not tipped in years, and it's a place that came well recommended, so I would really appreciate some input as to where I stand. I went to a restaurant tonight, a big name, touristy type place, but late at night, so it wasn't very busy. 24 tables, 6 occupied. When I arrived, the hostess was talking to a friend for several minutes before she acknowledged me or anyone in the line that had begun forming behind me. I know this because when the person she was speaking with left, she said, Sorry, that was just my friend. She asked me if I was the ten top reservation. I said no, I was a two-person walk-in. The people behind me identified themselves as the ten-person reservation. 
they pushed two tables together for the tent top, but then seated my party of two at one of the tables and split the group up. I said I was happy to sit elsewhere so the group could sit all together. They said, pretty aggressively, We have a system. If you want service, then you have to sit where the server puts you. You're not at your house. I almost laughed then and there because I was so taken aback by that. But I wrote it off as stress about the big group coming in. I sat down and asked how many people a medium pizza would feed. My server said he didn't know. I asked approximately how big it was. He said, medium sized. When the food came out, it was cold and we hadn't been given plates or utensils yet. We asked him to take our photo and he said he had a lot to do right now, but maybe later. As I said, six tables were occupied in this 24 table restaurant and he was not even close to the only one working. The final straw for me was the table next to us when they pointed out very politely to the server that they had been given the wrong meal. It contained ground sausage and they'd ordered vegetarian. Instead of going and fixing it, the server tried to gaslight them saying it was what they ordered. They were visibly clearly sick. I am sure they did not order pork. I asked for my check and a box for my food. The server said he'd be right back with my check, but it would be about a 10 minute wait for a box. When the check did eventually come, it was a table side credit card reader. And when I needed to fish in my purse for my card, he did a lot of sighing and made faces. Honestly, I was still planning to leave 10%. But the final incidents with the Sikh diners being served pork and his acting like he was doing us a favor by bringing the check pushed me over the edge. Maybe I am just venting at this point, but I really want to know if I'm missing something. Those of you who are industry professionals, do you see something I did to cause this or a circumstance I might have been blind to that caused this? I feel terribly about the whole thing and could really use some insight. Thank you. Hell, Freezer's note, well, obviously I'm not a server, maybe a server of words and stories, but not a server, but I think it's quite reasonable in this situation to not give any tip. Now, you've heard me speak before about how a 20% tip is generally the expected minimum, but that's only if the server's done a reasonable job. When it's blatantly bad service and they clearly don't care, like it obviously was in this situation, yes, I think it's quite reasonable to not tip in that situation. But generally speaking, if you're at a good place, good service, um, give them the basic 20% tip. If it's above and beyond service, as in you're genuinely impressed and you notice the effort, well, you could maybe give a little bit more if you can afford it. That's my thoughts. Now on to the next. Three, I've been working in a high-end hot pot shop in Singapore. There are plenty of wacky tales from here during my almost two year stint, but this one is etched in my mind. I was serving in a section alone, around nine tables and we were swamped. In came a group of four, two couples, pretty cool people. I enjoyed serving them, gave them my best service. Towards the end, one of the dudes wanted to play a game with me. Yay, I like games. He said, it is my birthday, and if you can guess my age, I'll give you $50. $50? Wow. I'm not going to pass that one. Might as well give it a shot. First round, I made a wrong guess of 29, but he said close enough. Gave me a second chance, so I stared at him hard. His friend was making praying gestures beside him. It was hilarious to look at. After one minute of contemplating, I gave it a go and said 31. His girlfriend right beside him screamed and jumped. The whole restaurant looked at us and I was a bit flustered. She grabbed his wallet and took out $50. 
I will remember that guy. Such a hilarious way of getting a $50 tip. Man, if you're listening to this, I hope you're doing well in this pandemic. And I hope you come visit me again one day. Four. So earlier today, I have a customer come into my restaurant and ask for an item that's off the menu, which led to a bit of a WTF moment. Here is my full conversation with the guy. Hello, sir. How may I help you? I need a place to go order. Yes, sir. What can I get you? I need to get an order of Red Snapper. I'm so sorry, sir, but that item has been removed from our menu many years ago. In fact, it was removed close to six years ago. No, it's not. I see it in the menu. He was somewhat agitated. I can tell he is annoyed by my response. At this point, my brain was spinning. Where in the menu could he have seen them? I make the menu myself. Last time I updated the menu was three months back. Whether it's Google, Yelp, the restaurant website, I did all of them. But sure as hell, I don't have Red Snapper in it. So I asked him politely, Sir, can you show me where you find the Red Snapper? We used to serve it, but we did make sure to remove them from our menu. It will help us greatly. The customer then proceeded to pull out his phone and go to Google. As I watched him go to the Google page of the restaurant, my heart was pumping. Did I really not remove it from the menu? I thought, but then he shoved the phone in my face. Here, see? I was calm outwardly, but my inner self was screaming WTF. Do you know what he showed me? A bloody review made by a customer six years ago. A review with a picture added, that's right, this customer did not look at the menu. He was reading the review and saw a picture of the red snapper order from six years ago and wanted to order them. I squeezed out the best smile I could and tell him, Sir, I'm so sorry, but that's just from another customer review. Because there is a picture from a review, it does not mean we have it currently. But it's in the menu. Sir, that's a review from many years ago. We really do not have that item available. But I'd be more than happy to assist you, if you'd like to order anything else. So you're telling me that even though it's still in the menu, I can't order it? Sir, then why didn't you remove it out? I drove 40 minutes here. After bickering a bit more, the customer left the store. I have to say, my eyes are still twitching as I write this. How hard is it to understand that customers can leave reviews for a restaurant and add a picture to them? I can't just remove that. Also, look at the menu. Not a review if you want to order. 5. So, I've been running a quite successful burger joint since, like, mid-July. It was accepted greatly by the locals and tourists, and things are looking great. I run the business and work in the kitchen, and my wife is doing the paperwork and does service duties. We also have two employees that help out in service and kitchen, full-time. Now, everything is going fine and great. However, I've run into a problem I can't define or even start to solve. I had a fight with my brother a few days ago because he basically invited me and my wife to join him and his wife at a concert in March 2024 that takes place like 1,000 kilometers away. There are several problems with that. First being that March is high winter season in our region where every hotel, apartment, room, etc. is booked till mid-April. The second problem is, I'd have to close the restaurant for several days to just fly over there for a concert, leaving, also, my employees without work. 
Now I try to negotiate with him for another concert in springtime, when the season is though, and I tried explaining that I have, beside the business, also three kids that need to go to school, etc. But he's not having any of it. He said something along the lines, What kind of a business is that if I can't close it for a few days? Why am I always using the kids for an excuse to not go to do this or that, and to top things off called me spineless? Now I love my little brother to the moon. But he's still living at our parents' house with his wife. Doesn't pay rent or mortgage, they don't have kids, they earn pretty solid salaries, and don't have very much to deal with in life. But his lack of understanding what I'm going through with three kids being responsible for my family, children, mortgage, all the duties, etc., and employees, etc., is getting to me. Hard. All I asked for is a bit of understanding. If I need to dip down into business for a year or two and grind to put it on its feet. We weren't in contact since the fight and I feel awful. He was my best man and I was his. He is my best friend and it baffles me. What the fuck is going on? Anyone else had a similar problem? Did anyone write a piece of advice how to approach this? I knew certain things were going to go down because of everything that's been happening this year. Damn, I did not expect this. Hey everybody, Hellfreezer here, and thank you very much for listening to Spinning Plates, episode 225. And thank you very much to everybody who allowed me to use their stories in this video. If you'd like to get the videos a little bit earlier, then you can support me through my Patreon page, which is linked in the description. And you can support me there for as little as a dollar or more if you'd like per month. Every dollar helps. I'm hoping to get it up to a few hundred. I'm at 40-something, almost 50 right now. You can also get yourself some Hellfreezer merchandise, which is also linked in the description at the Hellfreezer Teespring store. It is coming up to Christmas after all. And you can make donations during streams and videos like this one. And while you don't have to do this, I very much appreciate it. And every little helps. Right, let's see. I don't think there's any other business. So, I would like to comment a little on the final story there. It is unfortunate how siblings will often just not understand what their siblings do for a living. I mean, I, think, I don't think my sister even after all these years, fully understands how I make a living. She knows I do stuff on YouTube. She's heard me talk about doing things on Fiverr as well, but I don't think she fully understands it. She also seems to be under the mistaken impression that because I'm a YouTuber, I'm somehow rich. At least that's how she acts. She seems to think that I don't have the same problems she does in the current world we live in. There's more I could say about that, but... <laughs> mustn't grumble. But regarding the OP's brother, I, I've i never had kids, don't want kids. I've been very fortunate to find, find a partner who feels the same. But I've always been sympathetic to the legitimate restraints of people that do have children do. It's just you have different priorities, and that's, that's, that's reasonable. The only time I don't have sympathy is when people with parents are being unreasonable and expect the world to bend to them just because they have kids. No. But you have your responsibilities. Your kids are your priority. You have a business to run. Your business is your means of keeping those kids fed, so that is also a priority. I mean, I'm sure the OP of that story would like to go to a concert with his brother, and maybe there'll be times when that's possible, but... We have to be mindful of each other's situations, while also not imposing on each other whenever possible. All right, I don't think there's any other business today, so... Let's move right along to Hellfreezer's question of the day. And today's question is... And this one comes thanks to my moderator, Ashley, also known as Potato Puff. What's your favorite song to sing in the shower? Mine is actually a Bob Seger song. In fact, there's two. They're both Bob Seger songs. One is Old Time Rock and Roll, a bit of a classic. And the other is Night Moves. I first actually heard that... Uh, sorry for the rustling. <laughs> I have snacks beside me. I'm, I'm getting hungry as I work. Uh, the, I first actually heard Night Moves on the show Supernatural. And 
I very much enjoyed it, and it became one of my favorite songs. It goes, a little too tall, could have used a few pounds. No, that one, well, anyway, I won't sing the whole thing because copyright. But yeah, I very much enjoy it, so why don't you let me know what some of yours are in a comment below. I look forward to reading your answers. And with that, I'm going to head off for now. So until next time, thank you very much for listening, and take very good care of yourselves.